Hi everyone and welcome to Award Circuit. I'm Clayton Davis. And I'm Janelle Riley. And we're here today talking about the lead actress and supporting actress races. It's going to be a great year. It's There's some cool. good, good people out it's this year. It's a really, really good season. And one of the top contenders that has emerged this year is Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana in Spencer. Three days. That's it. She started this race off, you know, at the Venice and Telluride Film Festivals, receiving stunning acclaim. People seem to agree with that festival buzz, and she is a very popular choice among, you know, normies that are out there watching the Oscars. She'll be great for ratings. I feel like everyone is really anxious to recognize Kristen Stewart. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's rooting for her, and then she comes along playing Princess Diana. She's so good. Even people who might not love the movie really love her performance. I have yet to meet a single person who has criticized that performance. Yeah, and she's old one after Clouds of Sills Maria. She's great in Personal Shopper. I think she's great in Still Alice opposite Julianne Moore, who did win an Oscar. So Neon and Topic Studios are moving forward really fast on her Oscar chances. I think the general consensus is that her biggest competition at this point is probably Lady Gaga in House of Gucci. I subscribe to unconventional punishment. This is a powerhouse performance for someone who really hasn't done many leads in many movies, I guess two. Obviously already an Oscar winner for song, she could actually take home the Best Actress Prize this year. It is a fearless, complex portrait. She doesn't ask you to like this character, mm -hmm. but you will respect her. Yeah, and I think the movie calls on Gaga and all the things that she's good at without asking her to do anything more than that. As we see on social media breaking out right now, the k Stu fans and the Gaga stands, they are <laughs> battling at the moment. But I think Gaga stands a really good chance, and the movie's fun. Like it's she's fun. fun in it, and it and it, it's a very worthy uh, and admirable turn. Also fun, but a different type of fun is Jessica Chastain yeah. in the eyes of Tammy Faye. Hello, mother. This is Jim Baker, my husband. Playing the real life woman who was married to Jim Baker, who underwent some very controversial things at the time. And Jessica knocks it out of the park. It's very reminiscent of Judy, Renee Zellweger, who won the Oscar for that. And no matter what you, where you fall in the movie, I know it's a little bit mixed, she is something that is consensus everyone loves. She's always great and also if you think her performance is the least bit over the top, watch some of the actual <laughs> clips of Tammy Faye Baker and you will realize if anything she's underplaying it a little. The makeup might be a little distracting at first yeah. but it's meant to be. That's what Tammy Faye looked like. Again, she's almost underplaying it with the makeup yeah. and she really digs deep to find the character and find the nuance in it. Absolutely. On the other side of the spectrum we have a much more subtle performance I guess in a character study, uh, The Lost Daughter with Olivia Coleman. Children are a crushing responsibility. Happy birthday. Obviously a previous Oscar winner. This is a very quiet, complex, nuanced turn, and yet I love that people seem to be appreciating it. She got nominated last year for The Father. I thought that, you know, she's consistently fantastic. I would never ever underestimate Olivia Coleman. And I believe that Olivia Coleman nearly won last year for The Father. I think so so too. what she comes in here with is a very different take on women that we haven't seen a lot in Hollywood, and it's very strong, and coming from a debut filmmaker, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Oscar nominee in her own right, and she's gonna get Oscar nominated and adapted screenplay. The movie continues to gain momentum after yeah. premiering, and I think it's gonna do some damage out there. Yeah, people are really talking about it in a, in a passionate way that makes you, you know, remember to keep an eye on it. Absolutely, now we move to Penelope Cruz, Parallel Mothers, reuniting with Pedro Almodovar. <laughs> beautiful and gorgeous as ever in a movie that calls on her to do some of her best work that she's ever done. And the industry loves her. She's picked up three career nods, you know, and she's continuing to churn them out at a record pace. Previous winner in the supporting actress category, but here she is lead and, and the movie is her. Yeah. You know, she's in pretty much every scene. This will sound like a negative and that's not how I mean it. It is soapy in a way that gives her so much to do. And it is so fascinating to watch and just everything that's going on sort of behind her eyes. I think everyone is like checking her off that she might be potentially dangerous out there because she won the Volpe Cup over at yes. Venice and that usually has a strong correlation to Oscar success. From someone as experienced as Penelope Cruz, we go to a complete beginner, Alana Hyam in Licorice Pizza. But how'd you become such a hot shot actor? I think this could be the surprise of the race. People are really responding to Paul Thomas Anderson's movie, not a surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his, his movies always get a great response and he's known for 
fantastic performances. Alana, obviously in the band Hiam, never acted before, other than uh, in The Wizard of Oz in high school, I believe. It's, it's so cheesy to say she's such a revelation, but she is. She commands the screen, she holds our attention. You know, again, not a character that, you know, you instantly like. Yeah. Like, it challenges us, and there's just something so natural and compelling about her. People are really, really falling in love with her and that movie. What's impressive with her turn, especially, is that she holds her own against eight-time Academy Award nominee Bradley Cooper yes. and two-time Academy Award winner Sean Penn effortlessly, like, it's second nature to her. As that film gains momentum in the season, we could see her surprise, and it's great to just see her opposite Cooper yeah. Hoffman, who's also amazing in his role. She's also incredibly charming yeah. on the circuit, you know? She was, like, blushing during a Q&A the other mm -hmm. day, and I was like, you have to get used to people complimenting you. It's going to happen with this movie. <laughs> yeah, I always look forward to the history that could be made uh, on the circuit, and we could see some history made with Frances McDormand. She already made history last year when she was nominated for Best Picture and Actress, First Woman to be nominated for both categories for Nomadland, which she ultimately won. This year she could do it again with the tragedy of Macbeth, and doing that, she'll be the first person in history to do it back to back. Wow. I don't know how you can discount Frances McDormand in anything now at this point. People she, underestimated her last year and she walked away she, with Best Actress. With her third, and yeah. listen, she knocks it out of the park. And against Denzel Washington, yeah. they're like making magic together on screen, on a black and white beautiful screen. People get kind of weirded out when I say that I am not the biggest fan of Macbeth the play. But if you actually read that play, you you might realize, look, I'm not, I'm not gonna like, criticize Shakespeare, but I don't think it is one of his strongest. This movie adaptation is so good and mm. so strong and has such a great point of view from director Joel Cohen. Yep. And of course, she's a big part of that. Yep, but there's other Oscar winners that are gonna yes, follow her. Of course, Nicole Kidman, who, let's just be honest, like being the Ricardos, a lot of people were complaining that she was miscast as Lucille Ball. She is fantastic. Never doubt Nicole Kidman really captures, you know, the spirit, the essence of Lucille Ball. If you're looking for like a straight up imitation, mm -hmm. maybe not. I don't know. I'm I'm honestly not super familiar with I Love Lucy. Yeah, as as someone who is like whose wife reveres I Love yeah. Lucy. Listen, on paper, it shouldn't have worked. New strategy for all studios. Let everyone have zero expectations for your movie <laughs> or expect the worst, because you walk yeah. in. We watch it together, and I turn to you in the middle of the movie, I'm like, this is really good. I think Nicole Kidman could be a spoiler to win her second Academy Award. She's a former winner for the hours. She just continues to like climb the notch of like one of our best working actresses, yep. winning an Emmy for Big Little Lies, getting multiple nominations along the way uh, from, from the Academy. And the mannerisms when she does Lucy on the show yeah. is spot on. But Lucille Ball, the woman, outside of that, we don't know that we don't woman. Know her. Yeah. I took that and I ran with it and she is incredible in it. Just a few other actresses I want to mention. I believe they're all previous Oscar winners. Halle Berry directed herself in Bruised. She used to be Jackie Justice. Still am. I actually think that this is a fantastic performance. Could um, be the first woman to direct herself to a nomination, yeah. by the way. Which and she's awesome. a really good director. Yeah. Yeah. Give her another movie. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence in Don't Look Up. Very fun movie. Never ever underestimate Jennifer Lawrence, who just seems to be having a lot of fun in this and who I empathize with so much because she's trying to tell people, you know, the world is ending and no one wants to listen to her because, you know, she's just so shrill. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, Jennifer Hudson playing Aretha Franklin in Respect. It came out in August. Seems like a long time ago because everything feels like a long time ago. Former Oscar winner for Dream Girls. She's trying to make her second win and she's also going to be in the conversation for original song, which yeah. will help a ton. And then we have you know, two other newcomers coming up, which would be Rachel Zegler. Tonight. Who just had her premiere of West Side Story, is incredible as Maria, could potentially shake up the best actress race for just her first role. And Rooney Mara, who isn't a newcomer, but is a previous nominee for Carol and for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, she's back in the fold right now with Nightmare Alley. Gives a very strong performance, though a little light on the lead card. The Best Actress race is exciting, and I can't wait to watch it unfold. But make sure you stay tuned for our next video of Award Circuit, where we break down the contenders for you. Again, I'm Clayton Davis. I'm Janelle Riley. Thanks for watching. <laughs>